Hello everyone! It feels like it's been quite a while since I last posted a new concept piece. If you haven't met me yet, I go by Clara on here, and I share my creation process of my graphic novel as I concept the characters and stories and share them with you. I also share my ramblings of learning social media for the first time, and my journey on establishing my YouTube and Instagram accounts. So, to see more of that, like the videos and subscribe to help support me and my work! And while I'm on here, I want to quickly mention, guys, I had set a quarter one goal to be 40 subscribers on YouTube. And look, y'all have already knocked it out of the park. When I wrote my quarter one goals, I was at 15 subscribers, three months in. I was aiming to get this at the end of March. Now it's almost halfway to my mid-2023 goal of 100 subscribers. You guys are nuts, thank you. And as an extra thank you, here's a picture I'm real proud of that I didn't have a cording on for. Ozul. A very lovely upgraded version of him in a bust form. I've perfected his shadowy hair and put on proper base textures on his skin, little scales and feathers. Big difference, huh? I'm real proud of it. Now, today, I want to share this next character with you, Lord Horace Dalton, eldest brother to my previous concepted character, Grand Duke Theron Dalton. While I sketch him up, let us begin by talking about the big bag social media boss. Quick context, I'm new to social media. For many reasons, I did not use it until now, so you'll be getting an introvert's interesting point of view of it all. I've decided to focus on two platforms, YouTube and Instagram. I've given up on Twitter, mainly because of the regulation has gone to hell and the unprofessional way it is run now only encourages division and hate. Which is a bummer, they have some really talented artists on there and one of the few platforms that allows some blood and spicy material. YouTube hasn't been too bad, but I would say it takes most effort of the two. Creating content of the video, hours editing the video, writing the voiceover script if necessary, adding effects, text, sound, then searching for the right music, that must be copyright free, and putting it fluidly into your content. But oh, that's not all. You must then craft a nice little title that not only catches the eye, but has searchable keywords so your video pops up high enough in the listing. But wait, you gotta do your description too. Something nice for your viewers can read and enjoy. But also, you have to consider SEO or search engine optimization. You must slip in keywords there too to help beef up your video to be searchable and findable. It's not too bad. The hardest part is finding the trending current keywords that your target audience, the audience that likes your content, will be searching for. That's the tricky one. And for me, it really seems like speed paints, time lapses, etc. don't search that well. TubeBuddy doesn't pull up much for me anyway. Which means much slower growth for me, but I knew this. I knew that this is a marathon and not a sprint for this channel. I'm not following any trends or the hottest clickbait videos. I am faceless right now, which is a slow grower. And I am drawing characters no one has ever seen. They don't know them, so why would they care about them? That's fine. I do try to dip into some of the fun seasonal videos, like Inktober or Bullet Journal and things like that. It's been fun to dabble in traditional medias and go out of my comfort zone. One thing I have learned so far in the past few months is that if you ever plan to do one of those, you need to have your video ready. Early. Most post the next month's theme a few days or a week before the new month arrives, with much success. That is what I have seen and will try to do in the future. I have been enjoying playing with shorts and hope to keep creating more for those who enjoy them. And as far as YouTube goes, I am still very green and still learning by the day. But I feel I've improved in comparison to my old video. Is there anything my videos lack or could improve on? Anything you would want to see more? Let me know below of your thoughts. Now Instagram. Instagram is a whole other beast of its own. Hashtags. The right hashtags. But not too many. But wait, you don't actually need hashtags. Just kidding. Use 10. No more. Just kidding. Use up to 30 to get seen. Nah, you don't need those. Just SEO in your description. Uh oh, did you type a no no word into your real text or description? Can't have those, better censor them. What words? Uh, well, we won't tell you. We were having carousels get more exposure, haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding, do reels. Ironically, I've been enjoying trying to learn Instagram and I look forward to getting a proper groove on it. 
Now that I've got all of his figures fleshed out on the screen, it's time to talk about the newest concept and design for the story, Lord Horace Dalton. Eldest brother of the Daltons and heir to the estate, he suffered tragedy at an early age, falling down an abandoned section of the Dalton estate lift, shattering his hips to the point of disability. Fearing for the Dalton bloodline, his father stripped him of his title of heir, giving it to his younger, more aloof brother, Theron Dalton. Bound to a wheelchair, he spent his free time following the path of his late mother and delving deeply into the art of the sciences. While the abandoned section of the lift took away his mobility, it revealed a hidden laboratory lost to time that had been there since before the steel wall went up around the three nations. He spends his days in the laboratory, hoping to one day surpass his physical limitations. And that is a character snippet for Horus. Any with a sharp eye would notice that he's now on two feet, and this is how he will first appear in the graphic novel. I have him balancing his way upon a cane, as his right side is the most damaged, most stiff, and in most pain. The soles of his right shoe are thicker. To balance the growth deficit, his right side incurred growing up with severe damage to that side of his bone structure, leaving him slightly uneven. The fall nearly claiming his life, it left him fragile for a long time, leaving him pale and thin, though it could also be said that his experimentations could also be leaving these side effects upon his body. Once the title was removed from him, he spent his days secluded, sharpening his mind, leaving him prudent, logical, deductive, and results-driven. I had a lot of fun making this, and those who have followed the channel can see I've leveled up a bit and brought some life into the design page of my art, putting him into an action instead of a boring standing pose. I still want to thin out my line, mo line art more, and have been dabbling with textures and very soft gradients to flat with before overpainting. I am very pleased with how he turned out, and this feels very close to what I would like to paneling to be in the comic. Getting closer. Now, for all my super awesome people that are still here, I have a little surprise. I've started prints. They're on imprint for now, as I don't have an area for physical store, but once I get my copies of my prints to me in the mail, I'll be creating a discount code for advertising them. So if you want, wait till then. Again, thank you everyone for all of those subscriptions and likes. It lets me know you enjoy my content. Let me know if there's something you want to see more of. Have a good day. Bye.